17.3 is a smaller mid-patch update with some love being given to carries, mid laners, and off laners alike. So today we'll be providing you with the updates and a tier list for every single role in patch 17.3. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future patch updates. Let's start out with the carries, and more specifically Grim.exe. This is the first patch since Grim's relatively lackluster release, and Ometa have provided him with some much needed buffs across the board. Starting with his base stats, Grim has received a buff to his movement speed by 10, base health by 15, health growth by 2, and a physical armor increase of 2 as well. Grim's primary ability, Displacement Blast, received a buff, increasing his damage across the board and increasing the physical power scaling by 10%. The flip side being that his normal mode projectile speed has been decreased by 5%, which is a worthwhile trade in my opinion. Deflector Shield also received some love, with its cooldown being lowered at all ranks by 2 seconds, making the new cooldowns between 24 and 12 seconds, respectively. Lastly, Grim received a nice quality of life change to his ultimate, allowing it to be cast in the air, making the walking fridge a little bit happier. All in all, these are some great changes to Grim, but I'm not quite ready to say that it'll move him out of the B tier this time around. Revenant is receiving some buffs in 17.3 as well, with his primary skill, Obliterate, getting his cooldown lowered by a cumulative half second at the 2nd through 5th ranks, reaching 8 seconds at rank number 5. Scar has also received a buff to its damage amplification, going from 10% to 12%. Given these buffs to Revenant who typically struggles late game if he isn't fed, I do believe this pushes him up a rank to the B tier. The bot lane tier list isn't moving up too much after patch 17.3, but I expect that we'll see much bigger shifts when the 6 item update lands in a few weeks. Twin Blast is still in the OP tier for me, as his damage and the ability to be picked up pretty easily makes him a strong contender at any skill level. Now let's talk about the support nerfs on one hero, Narbash. Meta believes Narbash has been able to sustain him and his lane partner too much, and he's been hit twice this time around. With his mana growth being dropped by 10 points per level from 60 to 50, and Narbash's secondary, Song of My People, also receiving a magical power scaling nerf from 9% down to 8%. In conjunction with the change to Crystal Tear, expect to be a lot more mana hungry on Narbash. I don't quite think this knocks Narbash down a tier, so he'll remain in the A tier. Now for the entire support tier list. No drastic shakeups, but Bellica still remains one of the top heroes in the role for patch 17.3 as her ability to do a lot of different things well keeps her team in a great position throughout the majority of games. Now the mid lane received the most balance changes, with 5 heroes being adjusted in some capacity. First up is Argus, who received a nerf to his passive Obliterate, going from 40% to 35%, meaning his damage won't ramp up as aggressively as before. While this is a decent change to Argus, I don't believe it'll affect his win rate too much, and as such he'll remain in the S tier. Gideon, on the other hand, got hit a little harder where it counts, with his ultimate magical power scaling being reduced by 27%, going from 315% down to 288. This directly affects Gideon's ability to do damage in teamfights, which is where a lot of his strength in team compositions comes from. As such, I believe his black hole nerf knocks him down from the S tier to the A tier. Iggy and Scorch are up next, and while they've had a few rough patches, they are receiving some much needed buffs to their turrets. Flame Turret has had its damage increased at ranks 2 through 5, and its magical power scaling increased from 18 to 20%, and its mana cost decreased from 50 per cast down to 40. I believe this will give Iggy's turrets the ability to stay more relevant throughout the game and give him the ability to push up his lane more often using them. With this, Iggy moves up to the B tier. Morrigish's primary ability, Hive, received a buff in patch 17.3 increasing its magical power scaling from 65% to 70%, and lowering its cooldown by one second at all ranks. Morgesh has historically struggled to wave clear as effectively as other mages when scaling into the mid game. This buff gives her a little more ability to keep up by poking and farming with her Q, and thus bumping her out of the C tier and into the B tier. Very similar to Morgesh, the Fey receives some buffs to her ability to wave clear with her primary skill Bramble Patch's damage being increased by a multiple of 5 at ranks 2 through 5, and the cooldown being lowered at the same time. Now letting her cast her primary every 8 seconds at level 5 compared to 10 seconds before. Unlike the others though, I don't think this buff is enough right now to move her from the C tier. The mid lane saw some shuffling in 17.3 with the changes to Gideon dropping him down a tier, as well as Iggy and Morgesh moving up a tier. 
Similarly to the support tier list, I believe Bellica remains the only mid lane hero in the OP tier this patch because of her ability to deny areas and roam to create high pressure scenarios against the enemy team. And even with his buffs, Grim will remain in the mid lane B tier. Jungle has been dominated by Chimera for quite some time now, and Ometa has taken notice by nerfing him in two ways. First is Chimera's primary ability, Unleash. The total physical power scaling has been decreased from 45% to 40%, affecting Chimera's early skirmishes the most. Kai also received a cooldown increase on his ultimate by 10 seconds at rank 1, 5 at rank 2, and the ultimate ending up at the same at rank 3. These changes could end up forcing Chimera to farm a little bit longer before going for engages, but I don't believe this is enough to remove him from the OP tier of the jungle. My jungle tier list is pretty top heavy right now with Rampage joining Chimera in the OP tier. Grux is falling down a tier to A with some of the changes we'll talk about shortly, and unfortunately Kalari still remains down in the C tier since the meta has shifted more to favor the bruiser sustained junglers in the top spots. We've only got a couple changes coming to the offlane this patch, starting with Grux and his alternate ability. Double Pain is receiving a 10 damage nerf at all ranks, and it looks like Ometa is looking to take some power away from Grux's early skirmishes. Those skirmishes help him take charge and scale effectively into the late game, so he won't be able to trade as effectively with the nerf to Double Pain. While I still think he'll be a menace at the lower ranks, I believe this does lower him down from the S tier to the A. Shinbi's up next, receiving a little mix up to her early game mana. Her base mana has been decreased from 390 down to 370, while her mana growth per level has been increased from 30 to 36, loosening up the requirements of buying a mana item first by a little bit. She also received a buff to her secondary ability, Circle Rhythm. Her wolves got a slight magical power scaling increase from 22 to 25% on the damage side of the ability. Shinbi's been struggling recently, and while I think this is a step in the right direction, I don't quite believe this moves her from the C tier for the offlane. Finally, Zarus has seen some tweaks as well due to his recent popularity in the jungle. His base physical power has been increased from 54 to 56, helping him slightly in farming early on, but his ultimate, Colosseum, has had its cooldown tweaked at all ranks, being higher at rank 1 by 15 seconds, and lower at rank 3 by 5 seconds. All in all, this will give a little breathing room to his enemies early on, while still letting him turn on the heat in the late game. With these changes, I believe Zarus will stick firmly in the A tier for this patch. My offlane tier list sees most heroes staying in their position, with Steel still maintaining his role in the OP tier. With his general tankiness in combination with his usual builds, Steel can not only control the offlane, but bring the pressure around the map after the landing phase. Even with the buffs to their abilities, I do still believe that Iggy and Moragesh remain in the C tier for offlane, as the current roster of top heroes can really put them behind. So that's going to wrap everything up for my 17.3 tier list. Let me know your thoughts about where the heroes fall, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.